patrons, welcome to the next tutorial. So a lot of you have um, tried the last fur tutorial and you guys want to start practicing the fur tutorials and I know that one of the main subjects that everybody really loves to draw is wildlife and I've had a lot of people ask me about my jaguar and the jaguar that the previous tutorial I did on the jaguar was only an hour long and I think you guys want something that's more in depth like I did with the giraffe so that was a six part tutorial and you guys were able to follow everything through with me almost in real time and try it for yourselves and by the results that I saw from all of you it seems like it's it really was an effective way to do tutorials because you guys did an incredible uh, an incredible job with your giraffe um, drawings so this time I am going to do a lion now I know that you guys really love wildlife and that you guys want to do the lion and the lion's mane is going to be something that's really going to teach you guys so much and it's really exciting to start to get this going. This is going to be a very long tutorial. I don't know how many parts it's going to end up being but the size of this drawing is so massive that it might take two or three months. So it's... I hope you guys can bear with me, but the, the sheer size of this is so incredible. And if you guys can do this in the same size, you would be in awe of what you created. Because having something this big as a drawing that you created to show other people what you've done is pretty insane. Because it, it tends to be like a real statement piece. Something you can put in the middle of a giant wall because it's such a big uh, such a big picture and everybody will just be in awe of the drawing. So I know that if I have paintings up in my house or drawings up in my house, I tend to like things that are scaled, like things that are really really big compared to things that are small. Most of the time we do drawings that are quite small and you can put it in a picture frame next to your bed or in a bookcase. But things like this are things you really want on your wall because of the big size. You don't really want to put small things on your wall um, although I don't know if that's just me it might it might not be like that for everybody now I did this outline for this lion a long long time ago and it's just been sitting here waiting for me to get stuck into it so I finally decided that I'm gonna do this because you guys have had the third tutorial now so everything that I pretty much taught you in the third tutorial are gonna be techniques that I'm gonna use predominantly in most of this drawing, particularly in the mane of the lion. The only other different thing that's going to happen with this entire drawing is that I am not going to use any of my wax based pencils. I am going to not, I'm also not going to use my solvent for blending. I'm going to try something completely different. So the mediums that I'm going to be using in this drawing is I'm going to be using my pan pastels. So I got a full set of pan pastels which I'm really excited to try out. And then I'm going to use my Faber-Castell Polychromos oil-based pencils. And I'm going to use a this colored pencil powder blender um, to blend the colors. Because the reason I'm not using my wax-based pencils is because this does not blend wax very well. But the oil-based pencils, it blends smoothly. It almost actually makes it look or feel like pastel pencils with the way it blends into your paper. So I'm going to be using my pan pastels and it's, it has a nice pastel feel, that is what it is. And then I'm going to use my oil based pencils and blend with this um, colorless blender and that is going to give it the feel of pastels. There is going to be a lot of trial and error in this because I don't know how the two are going to mix together, how they're going to blend together with this. So I'm going to be experimenting a lot along the way and I'm just going to hope that it works out. You will see when I start the drawing that it's got a huge black background and I pretty much just airbrushed that entire background um, with like green and black. So it's got like a greenish tinge in it when you look at it at different angles. And then I have everything outlined in graphite. I used my um, projector to put this outline on. But you can use tracing paper so you can zoom in as big as you want your picture to be onto your monitor, your computer monitor. Trace it on tracing paper, even if you trace it onto like six different parts. And then transfer it on your really nice big drawing paper. The paper I'm using is Archer's watercolor paper. 
This paper I got in a massive roll, 1.5 meters by, I don't know, 20 meters or something like that. So a big, big roll of paper, which I sort of just stretched out onto a big MDF board, taped the edges together, and that's what I'm going to use. I have this entire board at an angle on my desk, and um, I pretty much just stacked it on, bo on boxes and used blue tack to sort of keep the edges together, which is, uh, yes, going to gonna be something to experience I hope it's gonna <laughs> gonna work out okay so I'm gonna get into this I'm gonna start off with my pan pastels and I'm probably gonna mix in the pencils as I go in there and then I will be telling you guys what colors and what um, yeah what pastels and what oil pencils I'm using and every material that I'm using as I go like I said this is gonna be a very long tutorial and I hope you guys can actually see this one through because you, and I really hope that you guys can do it this size as well. I'll give you exact measurements to this so that you guys know what size paper and what size to sort of um, zoom into your monitor when it comes to putting the outline onto your tracing paper. So um, let's get started. These marks over here, you can completely ignore. The, I try to use my um, Prismacolor markers to get that color down as a base, but I decided to stop. <laughs> so hopefully it will, as we layer, it will just get hidden a little bit more and more. So the color I'm using now is orange shade, number 280 orange shade. So it looks like that. This is going to be my base color for the entire line. I'm now going to use my orange tint, number 280.8.
that is a little darker than I'd like so I'm going to come in with a lighter colour so I'm going to use 740.8 Burnt Sienna Tint Okay, that's all starting to look like just one big mess. I think instead of etching, we're going to use the, the eraser as a uh, texturing technique. Where is my bitch? Okay, so next up, I'm going to work on that eye. I think I'm going to start the detailing around the eye and make the eye look real and then start working my way around everything else. Um, just because right now I'm not very confident with the start of this drawing. I'm actually really glad if you guys are watching this because it should give you a lot of confidence. Um, seeing me also struggle because it's not always going to be easy going. So I'm using my Faber-Castell Black number 199 and I just want to define my eye. The eye is closed so there's not, there's not going to be too much to worry about. Just make sure you get your shapes, your shapes right. That's all going to work out good. Okay, now I'm going to use my More Tomb Violet number 263 because it's got some reddish tinges in there. Just notice some of the texturing above the eye. Oh, 
I uh, forgot to mention, um, the reference photo for this drawing is from wildlifereferencephotos.com and it just costs $10 for their reference photos, which is a really, really good price. And the quality of the photos are amazing. So the more you can see, the easier it's going to be for you to draw. Okay, now it's coming with a brown, so I'm going to use my Burnt Umber number 280. This is from the Polychromos. Sort of like a zigzag key pattern over here. And then I'm going to use a lighter grey. So warm grey uh, 5, number 274. And just lightly add a layer over here under the eye. I'm now going to use my Polychromos Light Flesh number 132 and I want to add some of these pinkish values in here. Okay, I'd really like the eye to be darker, so I'm going to use a fine line sharpie and I'm going to make the black very, very black.
Okay, I love that. So the black Sharpie is, is going to be my go-to for the very black areas. I'm going to use my Tombow eraser and just start creating textures in the pan pastel colour that we put down. Okay, so pretty much all the the whole area that's got color over n over there now is the area we're going to work on with our polychromos pencils. So coming in with my raw umber number one eighty, I'm going to start adding color, but I'm still going to go in the direction that I can see in the reference photo. And still, and try and draw in that texture as well. So I'm going to need this to <laughs> to blend in smoothly with everything else.
Coming in with my olive green yellowish, number 173. And I want to add a bit of green in the eye here. Now I'm using my light yellow ochre, number 183. And just adding a light layer of this to enhance the yellowish tones. Now we are going to move on to the snout and the mouth and then it will be easier to sort of bring all the in-between parts together. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, use a dark pencil. So I'm going to be using my Polychromos Burnt Amber, Burnt Amber number 280. And I just want to sort of um, identify different areas. So just to make them stand out a little clearer so that I can see where they are. And then I want to um, start etching my texture in between all those areas that I've sort of just um, highlighted with the dark pencil. Because now I can see where my patterns are and where it's sort of sh different shadows are. And then it'll be easy to start um, adding in all the texture in between. So I did add my texture here on the eye. I did it after I added the color. So I don't want to do that for the rest of the drawing. I want to do my texturing first before I add the color. So this is just something to keep in mind. That spot doesn't belong there. <laughs> Thank you. 
so now I am using my green gold number 268 and I sort of just want to indicate to myself where the direction is going to change in the etching. So the, these, everything on this side of this line is going to be going in this direction because it's the main. Just going to continue like that. Continue. And then over here, sort of next to the main, or next to the, the head is where things are going to change direction. It goes in all sorts of directions next to the ear. And these are going to go in a sort of upward direction, small ones. These are going to start going down into a downwards direction. So from left to right in like a downwards arch. And then these are going to go in this direction. So now that I have these sort of darker lines over here, it's going to be easier for me to find... find the direction in which to etch my lines. So feel free to use a lighter colour like this so that you sort of know exactly which way to etch your lines. Because direction is very, very important. So it's going to be much easier for me to, to work out where things are going. So I'm going to come back in with my black Sharpie, which I don't know what I did with it. And this part of the nose is completely black, black the nostril.
It is pouring down this rain. <laughs> it's so nice. I'm sure you'd be able to hear it in the camera. make these whiskers fine because they're a little bit too thick
Okay, so this was part one of the lion tutorial. Now, a couple of things happened during this part of the tutorial. Because I have been experimenting a lot, you need to please keep this in mind. So a lot of the time, as I'm going through my drawing, I'm going to be going, oh, no, don't do this, or oh, I made a mistake here, and things like that. So I'd encourage you to sort of watch about a half an hour ahead before you attempt it yourself so that you don't make the same, mis the same mistakes that I made. For instance, um, I wouldn't call this a mistake, but I, I, it's something that is actually, it's good that it happened because then it shows you how easy it is to sort of um, mask, mask it. So I initially put two patches of Prismacolor marker down on the drawing paper, thinking that I'm going to use it as my base color, but when it came down to it, I decided I didn't want to use it. So I obviously cannot erase marker or anything like that, so I needed to make it blend in with what I was currently doing. So over here and over here, you can see the um, patches, but you can see with the way that I have um, put the color and that in there, it's it's really um, working well with the whole look of the eye. So it's looking realistic, the texture is blending in nicely, and that's what I did with the colored pencil, um, just to sort of make it blend and flow nicely as well. I did use the Pan Pastels as a base. I really love the color, the base color that it's got. But one thing I want to do first is I want to etch first. So the whole eye section, I did the colors first before I etched the texture in. So I etched the texture in afterwards, which is okay. I, um, it still looks good and I sort of drew the texture in instead of just relying on the, the texture of the etching. Um, but for the rest of the drawing, I want to etch first. So what I've done after I completed the eye, or mostly completed the eye, is I used a dark pencil to sort of show me the different areas um, that I'm going to be working with, just to give me a good indication of exactly where I am in the drawing at which time. Okay, so that gave you a rough indication of where exactly you want to etch your lines in certain directions. So you're going to take your pencil, um, just a light one, and you want to create shapes so that you know where you are in the drawing and which direction you want to etch in first. So what I'm going to be doing next is I will be working around the nose area and the mouth area over here, pretty much this entire face area, but making sure to focus on specific areas first and doing the etching in the paper in the right direction. Once I have that in, um, it's going to make it easier for me to put the colors on and do the texturing and everything like I usually do in my tutorials. And you guys would have seen in my first tutorial exactly what I mean and what I'm talking about. So this is just part one, so there's still a lot to do, but that is my experience and my sort of little bit of trial and error that I went through in the beginning of this. But I love actually making mistakes, or well, not making mistakes, but love I'm um, trying new things and sort of working things out and, you know, fixing things as I go. And I want you guys to see me do those things so that you guys can see that it's not going to be smooth sailing forever once you reach a point where you feel like you're very confident in your drawing um, skills. So the more you draw and the more you experiment, the more you're going to um, find little ups and downs here and there. But most of the time, you're going to be able to fix it. It's, it's very rarely that you actually destroy a picture. It's not that easy to destroy an image. There are many ways to fix things and sort of manipulate it in a way so that it actually works out beautifully. So I hope you guys enjoyed part one of the tutorial. The next part is going to be pretty much trying to finish as much of the face as we can. I do not want to make these tutorials too long. They're only going to be about an hour each. So it sort of depends on how far I get in an hour. And that will also depend and that will also um, sort of interpret how many parts there are going to be to this ginormous tutorial. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.